Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvisesa Sunyavari Pasyatyare Satarine Vansikopa Tiru Vishaki Pasindu Pe Vachapti Tanam Pavne Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namahulamaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Dvaita Gadar Har Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktarunda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare <clears throat> This particular verse is quite an extraordinary verse. <clears throat> I believe it's spoken by Lord Kapila Dave. <clears throat> And it centers around the holy name. Oho Bhattas Vapachot Ogarian Yajiva Gre Watate Namatubyam Te Pustavaste Jogahus Asnur Arya Brahma Luchur Nama Granti Ate. Oh, how glorious are thou they whose tongues are chanting your holy name. Even if born in the family of dog eaters, such persons are worshipable. <laughs> persons who chant the holy name of your lordship must have executed all kinds of austerities and fire sacrifices and achieved all good manners of the Aryans. To be chanting the holy name of your lordship, they must have bathed at all holy places, pilgrims studied the Vedas and fulfilled everything required. Srila <clears throat> Prabhupada's purport. As stated in the previous verse, a person who has once offensively chanted the holy name of God becomes immediately eligible to perform Vedic sacrifices. <laughs> Try to understand that verse, that statement. As it is stated in the previous verse, a person who has once offenselessly chanted the holy name of God becomes immediately eligible to perform Vedic sacrifices. One should not be astonished by the statement of Srimad Bhagavatam. One should not disbelieve or think, how by chanting the holy name of the Lord can one become a holy man to be compared to the most elevated Brahmana? To eradicate such doubts in the minds of the unbelievers, this verse affirms that the stage of chanting the holy name of the Lord is not sudden, but the chanters have already performed all kinds of Vedic rituals and sacrifices. It is not very astonishing, astounding, for no one in this life can chant the holy name of the Lord unless he has passed all over stages, such as performing the Vedic ritualistic sacrifices, studied the Vedas, and practicing good behavior like that of the Aryans. All this must first have been done, just as a student in a law class is to be understood to have already graduated from a general education. Anyone who is engaged in chanting of the holy name of the Lord, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari must have already passed all over study stages. It is said that those who simply chant the holy name with the tip of their tongue are glorious. One does not even have to chant the holy name and understand the whole procedure, namely the offensive stage, offensive stage, and pure stage. If the holy name is sounded on the tip of the tongue, that is also sufficient. It is said here in that Nama, a singular number, one name, Krishna or Rama, is sufficient. It is not that one has to chant all the holy names of the Lord. The holy names of the Lord are innumerable, and one does not have to chant all the names to prove that he has already undergone all the processes of Vedic ritualistic ceremonies. If one chants only once, and it's to be understood that he has already passed all the examinations, not to speak of those who are chanting always 24 hours a day. It is specifically here says, Dubyam, 
unto you only. One must chant God's name, not the Mayavadi philosophers say, any name such as demigod, name or names of God's energies. Only the holy name of the Supreme Lord will be effective. Anyone who compares the holy name of the Supreme Lord to the names of the demigods is called a shandi or an offender. The holy name has to be chanted to please the Supreme Lord and not for any sense gratification or professional purpose. If this pure mentality is there, then even though a person is born in a low family, such as dog eaters, he is so glorious that not only he has to purify himself, he is quite competent to deliver others. He is competent to speak on the importance of the transcendental names, such as Haridas Thakur did. He was apparently born in a family of Mohammedans. But because he was chanting the holy name of the Lord offenselessly, Lord Chaitanya empowered him to become the authority or acharya of spreading the name. It does not matter that he was born in a family which is not following the Vedic rules and regulations. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Advaita Prabhu accepted him as authority because he was offensely chanting the holy name of the Lord. Authorities like Advaita Prabhu and Lord Chaitanya immediately accepted that he had already performed all kinds of austerities, studied the Vedas, and performed all sacrifices. That is automatically understood. There is a hereditary class of Brahmanas called the Smarta Brahmanas, however, who are of the opinion that even if such persons who are chanting the holy name are accepted as purified, they still have to perform the Vedic rites or await their, their birth, next birth in the family of Brahmanas so that they can perform the Vedic rituals. But actually that is not the case. Such a man does not need to wait for the next birth to become purified. He is at once purified. It is understood he has already performed all sorts of rites. It is the so-called Brahmanas who actually have to undergo different kinds of austerities before reaching that point of purification. There are many other Vedic performances which are not described here. All such Vedic rituals have been already performed by the chanters of the holy name. The word juhuvu means that the chanters of the holy name have already performed all kinds of sacrifices. Shashnu means that they have already traveled to all the holy places of pilgrimages and taking part in purificatory activities as those places. They are called Arya because they have already finished all these requirements and therefore they must be among the Aryans or those who have qualified themselves to become Aryans. Aryan refers to those who are civilized, whose manners are regulated according to Vedic rituals. Any devotee who is chanting the holy name of the Lord is the best of Aryan. Unless one studies the Vedas, one cannot become an Aryan but it's automatically understood that the chanters have already studied all the Vedic literatures. The specific, specific word used here is anuchu, which means that because they have already completed all those recommended acts, they have become qualified to be spiritual masters. The very word grinanti, which is used in this verse, means to be already established in the perfectional stage of ritualistic performances. If one is seated on a bench or a high court and is giving judgment on cases, it means that he has already passed all legal exams and is better than those who are engaged in the study of law or those expecting to study law in the future. In a similar way, persons who are chanting the holy name are transcendental to those who are factually performing the Vedic rituals and those who, are ex who expect to be qualified or, in other words, those who are born in families of Brahmanas, but, not, but have not yet undergo the purificatory processes, and who therefore expect to study the Vedic rituals and perform the sacrifices in the future. There are many Vedic statements in different places saying that anyone who chants the holy name of the Lord becomes immediately freed from conditional life, and that anyone who hears the holy name of the Lord even though born of a family of dog eaters, 
also becomes liberated from the clutches of material entanglement. Ma Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale, Sri Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamani, Namaste Saraswati Deve, Gauda Mahasa Charini Vishi Shushan Yavari, Pastyatya De Satarine, Vansha Kalpa, Tarubis Chakri Vasindu, Pe Vachapatitanam, Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Maha. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitana Prabhu Nathananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasati Gauda Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare hmm. So this verse uh, helps us to understand the glories of the holy name and what are the qualifications? There is none. There are no qualifications for chanting the holy names. As to say that even one born in a family of dog eaters becomes glorious. Oh, how glorious are they whose tongues are chanting your holy name. Even if born in a family of dog eaters, such persons are worshipful. Aho bata. It's quite mm, a strong statement. Oh, how glorious. So it shows uh, a slight indication of the glories of the holy name and one who chants the holy name. It doesn't say here that one has to continuously chant, but it says that one chants once, purely, or not even purely, offenselessly, without offense, then one is able to surpass all those who are, you know, Dvivedi, Trivedi, Chaturvedi, Panchvedi, those who are expert at studying all the Vedic knowledges and performing ritualistic ceremonies. Uh, their qualifications are not as glorious as one who once purely, offenselessly, chants the holy name of the Lord. Srila Prabhupada writes a very lengthy purport to make sure we understand the details of this particular verse and not consider it as some kind of hyperbole, uh, eulogy, exaggeration, means to get people to chant. It's none of these things. It's actually indication of how glorious the holy name is and how glorious those who chant the holy names of the Lord. And the offenses to the chanting of the holy name in the eighth offense, it's considered, it says to, to consider the chanting of the holy names of the Lord to be like the Vedic ritualistic ceremonies that are mentioned, karma kanda. And one who compares the holy name to anything other than itself is a pashandi or atheist or offender, which means that the, the holy name of the Lord is so glorious that there is no comparison on any level. We even understand from Shastra that the holy name of the Lord is even more merciful than Krishna. He who is named is not as glorious as the one as the name itself. <clears throat> Can't imagine. There's no imagination allowed in this particular statement because we take it as factual. It's coming from Srimad Bhagavatam, which is non different than Krishna. So we must accept it in that way and understand that if we can once offenselessly, you'll see the example of that's mentioned in the sixth canto of Ajamil. What was Ajamil's qualification? He had none. He was simply performing all kinds of sinful and irreligious and criminal activities also, not just sinful, but criminal. 
he was so sinful that it was astounding that when he chanted the holy name of Narayan, not even indicating Narayan, but indicating his son, calling to his son, he somehow or other completely destroyed all the reactions of all his sinful activities just once. Mm -hmm. Just by that one fenceless form of chanting. He chanted in Amabas, he didn't chant it in, in Sudanam, but still, because it was offenseless, he remembered Narayan after he spoke the name itself. When he called, he was calling his son. And when he heard the name itself, being called by himself, he remembered the person Narayan. And at that point, everything was clean. His slate was completely clean. So in this age, it is says, iti so daishakam nam nam kali kamasanasanam, nata parate opayo, sarvedeshu drishyate. Lord Brahma speaks this verse from the Kali Santara Upanishads which mentions that after searching through all Vedic knowledge, one cannot find, now after searching through all Vedic scriptures, Vedic knowledge, one cannot find a more direct, easy, sublime, and powerful process of purification and chanting these 16 names, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Hmm. Of course, there is one consideration that we should not fall into, and that is mentioned as the seventh offense to the holy, holy name. One should not chant the holy name thinking that, well, now I have the secret. Now I have the message. I can perform any activities I want, and if I chant the holy name, I will be free from the reactions of those activities. No, that is not what's being indicated here or in any Shastra. Intentional sinning and chanting is another type of offense, which turns the holy name into not something that elevates the person, but pushes them down. In other words, the holy name is Krishna himself. It's non different than Krishna. It's a person in the form of transcendental sound. Can never get the benefits of chanting the holy name and is liable for the reactions of their sinful activities. But here it says one who just chants offenselessly. That means even if one is chanting, and once one offenselessly chants the holy name. So what is that offenseless chanting? There is no intention other than to glorify the holy name and purify oneself. So we can see devotees have been chanting for how many years and how many mantras every day. Yeah, and this verse actually applies if we once chanted the holy name of the Lord offenselessly, we are better than all the Vedic sacrifices, rituals, asphameda yagyas, go yagyas, uh, mantra chantings, uh, giving in charity, performing various types of pujas on, on special occasions. All these forms of spiritual activities which are more like religious activities, uh, combined together cannot equal once the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Because it says, Goloka Premadan Harinam Shankirtan Ratin Jan Milo Kene Upai. It is coming from the spiritual world itself. It is the sound in the spiritual world. It is the music that keeps the spiritual world alive, the constant chanting of the holy names of the Lord goes on as the sound coming and that same sound has descended into the hearts of the great souls who have made that sound their life and soul and their very treasure. And when they speak or chant 
or encourage others to, to chant, the power of their vakya is so potent that those who take it up, they will easily come to the platform, as this verse says. It doesn't even say, it says on the tip of the tongue. This is an interesting statement. The acharyas give some comment on this, not even situated completely on the tongue, but on the tip of the tongue. That's mentioned in the purport. That's how glorious the holy name is, and that's how glorious one becomes who chants the holy name of the Lord. So we are chanting the holy names of the Lord, so we should try to purify ourselves in the chanting. And the main purification is that we should try to free ourselves from any desire to enjoy the material world. We have to live in the material world. We have to deal with the material energy, but that is fine. But if we have the enjoying spirit, then that causes us to chant with offense. You can't rid yourself. Prabhupada gives the example, you know, a beautiful girl is walking down the street and one cannot avoid maybe seeing that girl, but if one sees with a desire to enjoy, that is material, that is, um, that will cause sinful reactions. But if one sees, but doesn't think otherwise, then that is normal, that happens. We see so many things in this world. And we all interact with so many things, but the enjoying spirit is what causes us to uh, chant with offense. And so we have to rid ourselves of that enjoying spirit. And then gradually we can come to the stage of pure chanting. But here it doesn't mention that even, that you one can come to the stage of being free, of being qualified as Veda, Veda Vata Rata. In other words, they, are, they, they can perform all ritualistic ceremonies in the Vedas. They are above all that if they even once offenselessly chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. This verse is quite powerful. It's quite direct. Prabhupada wants us to make sure we understand the principles that are being written here. And so he... Uh, give such a lengthy and detailed explanation, emphasizing this point continuously, both the glories of the holy name and the glories of one who chants that holy name without offense, like that. They become as worshipable as Krishna himself. <laughs> Pretty powerful verse. It shows the glories of the holy. So we should never take advantage. I'm, I'm sorry, we should never take for granted this chanting of the holy name of the Lord. It's something that is most sacred, so powerful. It is the manifestation of all mercy condensed into one particular form in this age. Kali Kalai, Namarupa, Krishna Avatar, Namahoite, Hayasarva, Jagat Nistara. Krishna has personally descended in the sound of his name. When one devotee was giving class, Srila Prabhupada was sitting there, this devotee was a sannyasi, and he was speaking, and Prabhupada was listening to his sannyas disciple speak. And at one point he said, and Krishna is in his holy name. And Prabhupada immediately stopped the class and turned to the sannyasi and said, where in the holy name is he? <laughs> and then the devotee who was speaking understood Prabhupada's indication. He said, I'm, no, actually Krishna is not within this holy name. He is his name. <laughs> he is none different than the name itself. So one once chants purely the name of Krishna, that person is glorified as good as Krishna himself. 
as it's mentioned here in this report. Okay, we'll stop there and see if there's questions. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much uh, for the nice class today uh, about holy name. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Um, you have to raise your volume a little bit. <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj. Um, I was just thanking you for the class today. And I request devotees, if they have any questions or uh, comments or realizations to share, uh, please uh, go ahead. Thank you. Okay, so no questions. Krishna. Hare Krishna. Oh. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. <laughs> okay, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Guru Maharaj, um, we know the importance of chanting. We hear the importance of chanting the holy name. We try to read and understand the chanting of the holy name. But because the fruitive mentality is so deeply embedded within, within the site, when we are chanting and nothing much seems to be happening, it seems like, I don't know whether this is for real. Will this chanting really help me? Will it improve me? Will it do uh, take me to a better level spiritually these kind of doubts start coming you you want to make an ex you want to make an experiment no i don't want that experiment i don't want to stop <laughs> yeah well you, that experiment will show you it'll indicate clearly the answer to your question i dare not do that guru maharaj no if you stop for one day and you'll know you stop for two days, some many people know. If you stop for three days, everybody will know. <laughs> I cannot we, don't, we, we don't realize that you know we should try to perfect our chanting by hearing clearly the sound. Every day I'm sending some messages to different devotees on the chat uh, so they can uh, on the on their on their WhatsApp so they can get a little indication of the glories of the Holy Name. So we always reminding each other the glories of the Holy Name. Prabhupada has said many things in relationship to the chanting and to the Holy Name itself. So ultimately the process is to come to the stage of satatam kirtayan tomam to chant always. We practice. And you see, is there something in your life that is blocking your ability to chant nicely? Are you too tired? Are you staying late on the computer at night and not be able to rest properly when you get up the next day? Are you eating too much in the evening or maybe eating nothing in the evening? Or are you... Uh, are you just uh, walking around, looking around at your surroundings in your house and remembering what you have to do while you're chanting? You know, you have to see what are the things that consciously is avoiding you to stay connected to the sound. But if you hear once clearly the chanting of the holy name, you you'll uh, you fit into this verse perfectly. <laughs> But then again, you don't believe until you make that experiment. <laughs> so you're willing to make the experiment and then your question is answered. It's too scary to stop chanting Guru Maharaj. It's just with chanting yeah, well, survival. So imagine without chanting where I would be. I can't dare yeah, to be. So therefore you answered your own question. <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Continue and try to 
Remember Prabhupada's instructions and the instructions of the Acharyas on the process of chanting and make it an endeavor. Just like when you learn a science or a skill, you somehow have to go through the different stages of learning until you actually become proficient. Mm. Same way, make, make the attempt in your life is to perfect your chanting. Yeah. Make it a feature of your daily activities. Let me chant purely today. Today I will chant a holy name very purely without offense. And do whatever you can. The mind is a rascal. The mind will keep jumping in there and diverting our attention away. But you push him out. Hmm. Hmm. Would you like to hear something about the mind? Yes, Guru Maharaj. That's the rascal. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll read something that I wrote about the mind. This is my own writing, which for me is uh, I'll need to leave the precinct here and go to another area to find what I'm going to read. So um, what do I do? I just, uh, how do I leave? Uh, Guru Maharaj, you have to just click on your browser or your folders. Uh, your uncle. Okay, now, yeah, now, where do I, now how do I leave? Oh, and then I can uh, just. Yeah, maybe where can I... you can escape, uh, you press the escape button to um, get a normal screen. Okay, okay, got it, got it, thank you. I'll read something which is part of a diary, my diary that I was reading today as I was editing this particular part of the diary. Hmm. Hmm. Let me see if I can. Can you still hear me? Yes, good morning. Let me see. I'm getting close here. Okay, here it is. This was written December 16th, 2013. Dear mind, my friend or somebody else, my interest is your interest. You should know this by now. How long will it take you to understand this established fact? Of course, we have been together for millions of lives and we sort of know each other. But in this life, there has been a radical change in the direction we are going. Perhaps you are unaccustomed with the change and therefore find it difficult to adjust, especially with developing a humble mood and being sensitive to the needs of others. Anyway, we will continue to guide you, but please try to be more cooperative. And if we forget what is right or needed, please give a signal. Recently, we have been gone some needed austerities in order to improve and normalize health. So don't be disturbed or envious. Try to cooperate. Know at the end we will, be, we will both be immensely benefited. Our main concern is not to try to bother us both with so many useless thoughts. Rather, focus on Sri Krishna, his name, his pastimes, and the services of his devotees. At times we feel happy with your performance, yet lately you're a bit too indulgent. Correct that and we both will be happy. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, who is your friend and our master eternally, Hare Krishna. Hmm. Some, some, some discourse with the mind. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much for sharing that wisdom with us. Yeah, you talk to your mind and tell it what to do. Don't let it tell you what to do. <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj. I will try. Thank you so much. Trying in Krishna consciousness is success. <laughs> Giving up is defeat. Success comes when Krishna is pleased.
Okay, Mother Suda, you have your you have a question. Yeah, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Dhanut Pranam Maharaj, Guru Maharaj. Uh, thank you for the wonderful class. Uh, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you, Maharaj. Uh, thank you so much, Maharaj, for a wonderful class. And uh, I have a question about like uh, general like uh, duty and uh, material desires. Uh, like um, Maharaj, you mentioned, like in order to chant defenselessly, uh, we need to actually like uh, free ourselves from the material desires and enjoying tendency. But uh, Maharaj, I just can you make a little bit um, understand me or like just a little bit more like uh, if you can um, throw a light, like you know, as I'm in a Grahastha life, we are in a Grahastha life. So, how should uh, we understand like you know, uh, duty and material desires? You know, because day to, I mean, every day we have a lot of desires in the Grahastha life when it comes to kids or like house or anything. We want like kids to send a good college, we want them to study nicely, um, put them in nice activities activities and also like a lot of uh, material desires when it comes to house. So, I mean, how should I understand like, um, like, do you, you know, a, do you have a Bhagavad Gita in front of you? Mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, sorry, Maharaj, it's uh, downstairs. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. I, can I go and bring it or? Uh... Um, well, we can bring up the verse. Mm -hmm. um, Lavanya, bring up the verse. Chapter 9, verse number 27. Bhagavad Gita. Yat karosi yaranasi, yancha hosi dadasi yat, yat tabasyasi, kontaya, tadkurushwa manarpanam. Whatever you do, whatever you eat, whatever you offer, or give away, and whatever austerities you perform, do that, O son of Kunti, as an offering to me. Srila Prabhupada's purport. Thus is the duty of everyone to mold his life in such a way that he will not forget Krishna in any, any circumstance. He even has, everyone has to work to maintenance of his body and soul together. And Krishna recommends that one should work for him. Everyone has to eat something to live, therefore he should accept the remnants of foodstuffs offered to Krishna. Any civilized man has to perform some religious ritualistic ceremonies, therefore Krishna recommends do it for me. And this is called archanam. Everyone has a tendency to give something in charity, Krishna says give it to me. This means that all surplus money accumulated should be utilized in furthering the Krishna conscious movement. Nowadays, people are very much inclined to the meditational process, which is not practical in this age. But if anyone practices meditating on Krishna 24 hours a day by chanting the Hare Krishna mantra uh, on his beads, he is sure to be the greatest meditator and the greatest yogi as substantiated by the sixth chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Look what Krishna's giving the, the, whatever you do, do it for me. Raise your kids as an offering to me. Clean your house as an offering to Krishna. Krishna's house, keep the house clean. Take care of your health as an offering to Krishna. It's Krishna's body. He has given it to you. Maintain your role as a wife within the family, as a duty to the family members who are Krishna's parts and parcel. Serving them, you see yourself as serving Krishna by serving them. It's a matter of consciousness like that. So the mood of service is really the answer to your question. If we do it in the mood of enjoyment, that is material. If we do it in the mood of service, that is spiritual. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, Maharaj. So, um, any anything what we do is like we should do it as a service, as a duty, not like with an expectation, like I mean, something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We have to perform these activities, mm -hmm. but if you're, if you have the the idea that I'll do them if they're enjoyable, mm -hmm. and if they're not enjoyable, I won't do them. Mm -hmm. 
then you're on the material platform. But if you do it as a duty, because you're mm -hmm. trying to become Krishna conscious and you have, these are called subsidiary or parallel activities in the mm -hmm. life of a devotee. Mm -hmm. So they must be done and they must be done properly, mm -hmm. but not with the spirit of enjoyment, but the spirit of accomplishing the activities so you can move on in, in the activities of your life. Mm -hmm. They are not directly Krishna conscious activities, but they can be dovetailed. Dovetail mm -hmm. means directed towards Krishna. Keeping that, and you're sitting down to eat, eat Krishna prasadam. The house you live in is made out of materials that are made from the earth. These materials comprise the basic elements of material energy, which are produced by Krishna. So everything you have is ultimately coming from Krishna and is meant to be connected to Krishna in the mood of service. That's all. Mm -hmm. It's a consciousness you have to practice. That's mm -hmm. all. And you still, you do your duty. Mm -hmm. You want to raise your kids nicely so they become successful and mm -hmm. do that. But see those children, not as your children, but as, as souls that were sent to you to raise as devotees of the Lord. You can still see them as mine, or you can see them as belonging to Krishna, have been given to me by Krishna to take care of them and to raise them in that way. It's a matter of consciousness. Also. That's why we call it Krishna consciousness. Yes, <laughs> more mm -hmm. Thank you, Maharaj. Very yeah, wonderful. So, um, so constantly I have to practice and uh, keep my consciousness, like Krishna conscious. Yeah, yeah. When I, you practice it for a while, it becomes normal. Mm, yes, yes, Maharaj. Yes, yes, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you. Yeah, I give you an example. Mm -hmm. It's called take a step back. Take a step back means just stop everything. Look around and see what has meaning in your life and why does it have meaning in your life. It has meaning in your life because you place meaning upon it, that's all. Ultimately, you have nothing to do with anything in this world because you are not of this world. <laughs> you are pure spirit. So you come into the world and everything around you is of the world. But when you see it, and you uh, interact with it, it depends on the value you place. Just like something can have an importance in your life in one day and that same object the next day can have no importance. It's a matter of consciousness. So we place importance on our family and the quality of family life. But that is part of, of living in this world and it's foundational to the practice of spiritual life. We have accepted a particular ashram, which is called Krihasta Ashram, which means married family. So make that atmosphere spiritual, not material. If you, you can keep it material by seeing it material and acting it in the material life, but when you connect it to Krishna and you mm -hmm. live by religious principles, then you gradually start to elevate your consciousness to seeing everything as coming from Krishna, meant for Krishna, and ultimately offered to Krishna. Manaso deho geho yo kichumur arpilu tu apade nandikishur. Bhakti Vinota core praise. My home, my wife, my children, my possessions, my very body. Oh, Nanda Kishore, it is yours. It belongs to you. Everything belongs to God. Everything. It's all his property. Beautiful, beautiful, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Yeah, definitely. I'll just keep uh, trying. I'll constantly try to practice um, uh, to keep yeah. my con. Uh, yeah, perfect your chanting and you'll, it'll be more and more... Uh, natural to think and act in that way. Mm -hmm. Yes, Maharaj, definitely.
and maharaj my chanting is more like uh, it goes with reading um if i don't read my chanting is not very good maharaj so you know so uh, i see that i mean uh, even if i don't read like a one or two pages um a day i my chanting goes down my chanting is not very good on that day i just chant yeah. because yeah mm, i think many devotees have similar experiences mm. Thank you Maharaj thank you so much for your valuable Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and all glories to All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. <laughs> Uh, you mentioned that uh, those who try in Krishna consciousness, uh, they succeed. And um, I all the time have this uh, difficulty to, to see if I'm seriously trying or just saying I try, I try because um, sometimes it's not so obvious if we are just uh, doing uh, things as a routine or, or we are really trying or or I, I don't know how, how it's possible to determine this. Oh yeah, you're too much of a gyani. <laughs> <laughs> you try to analyze everything you do. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like that, but uh, I should at least develop <laughs> yeah. some. Yeah, it's like there's a there's a story where the person is dancing on the stage and everybody is saying, "Oh, what a nice dance! You dance so nicely." Uh, when you when you move to the left, does your right foot move in front of your left, or does your left foot move in front of your right? So the dancer is thinking, "Hmm, let me see. Now, when I move in that direction, which foot is actually moving, and and in what direction?" Hmm, and then he starts. Uh, it's called uh, anal paralysis by analysis. <laughs> uh, I see. So I say analyze and everything. <laughs> so <laughs> don't worry about so much to see about the motivation behind your activity. That's more more important than how the activity is performed. Mm. It's important how the activity is performed too, but. If we get too much into the details of that, and we try to put that into a box, and then we start to lose our individual individuality and our particular nature on how we do things, which is different from somebody else who may do the same thing. So that's not so important. It's the motivation and the and you know the purpose behind the activity. Mm. I see. Yeah, I just sometimes I, I have this feeling that uh, when I'm not able to do something uh, for Krishna and I feel weak, then then I just make this excuse to Krishna that, oh, please forgive me. I'm I'm not strong enough for this, but it may be just uh, uh, that I'm I'm lazy to get out of my comfort zone. So that's why <laughs> I was asking. Yeah, you're you you have you're Gani. But Gani's can become bhaktis too. Ganavamam yeah. Vasudeva Sarvamiti Samahatma Stadurla Baha. Bahunam Gyanavamante, Gyanavaman Prupadyante. So if you stay in the process, you'll come to Bhakti. <laughs> Uh, okay, so that's enough for, for this. So it's there's no special uh, arrangement needed for Gyanis to, <laughs> to... No, to they just stay, the, stay in the bhakti process and their Gyan will become purified. <laughs> okay, I, I will try to do that. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Um, I have a question, Guru Maharaj. Um, so when I am talking to new persons uh, about the holy name, even though I know a lot of things about holy name, I'm, I'll be just confused to what to say to them. 
uh, about the holy name like how to how to make them start chanting um, yeah say if, if you want to be happy chant hari krishna <clears throat> if you want to connect with the with god chant hari krishna <clears throat> If you want to, you know, and then we get into some lesser statements. If you chant Hare Krishna, then you can be free from, you know, from suffering. <clears throat> we don't get into the glories of the holy name with new people, but we just give them some basic principles. Chant and be happy. Chant, <clears throat> you, you become peaceful. <clears throat> we don't say chant and you'll get a good job or chant and you'll make more money. We don't talk like that. Yeah, that's why uh, even I was confused. Like usually people think that if you do anything, we'll get material gain something uh, in return. So uh, usually people do like that, right? So um, that's why I should not tell like that, but uh, how to tell them uh, that was my... Yeah, basically, you can say, just try chanting and yeah. see how it works. If it doesn't work for you, you can stop just get him the chance somehow. <laughs> Say, I'm chanting. I'm feeling happy. I, I connect with Krishna. I connect with God through chanting. God is the most, the greatest of all persons. Why not connect with the greatest of all persons? Chant Hare Krishna. Hare means the energy of God. Krishna is the supreme source of all existence. So when you chant, you tell me, chant Hare Krishna, you're including the whole creation within that chant. It's God and his, his energies are all together in, that, in the chant. Chant, be happy. You describe your own success in chanting. You're now, you used to be a person who was always fighting with everybody, but now you love everybody. So, you know, you can say like that. You know, you can tell about your own transformations and how, you, how it helped you in your own chanting. Maharaj. Yeah, definitely I'll do that, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. Yeah, you try different things to see what works. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. But avoid the ninth offense to the holy name. It's to speak the glories of the holy name to the faithless. Yeah, that's good. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Um, yeah, you, you talk about the, uh, since I've been chanting the holy name, I follow these four principles. Then you mentioned the four principles. Mm -hmm. Nobody in the material world is following these four principles. You say that by chanting the holy name, I've, I'm connected with God and I can give up all of these bad habits. You have to make it sound like there is, that they can find happiness in chanting. <laughs> Somehow. Peace, happiness, freedom from stress. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, recently I was being, uh, I'm, I'm telling uh, some people about like, uh, how uh, we are peaceful in this um, pandemic situation where everyone are getting agitated or uh, getting anxiety into anxieties like uh, how how the future will be what will happen to my job and all these things but uh, when we are chanting uh, how peaceful we are and uh, we are just leaving everything on krishna and doing our own thing um, yeah. that 
we are realizing nowadays so that's what i'm trying to share um, with people that's good yeah everyone is you know in anxiety what will happen they don't like what's happening now and they're, they're even projecting the future to be worse <laughs> But when you're chanting, even if the whole world collapses, <laughs> it doesn't affect you. Okay. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Um, any uh, devotees, any questions? Um, Guru Maharaj, I think there are no more questions now. Uh, we okay, to... so we'll be on board tomorrow at five o'clock, okay. uh, four o'clock again, four o'clock UK time. And uh, I don't know if you heard the announcement, we'll be here every day on this time. We decided not to go along with the other program that oh. we, we did last night. Okay, so uh, Guru Maharaj, now from Monday onwards, um, uh, from tomorrow onwards, you'll have uh, we'll have regular classes. No, not in the ones in the temple, no, because I noticed devotees don't ask any, can't ask questions or whatever. <clears throat> so from Monday onwards, uh, we'll have a regular Zoom session, Guru Maharaj. I just want to come. Yeah, at, at four o'clock UK time, and then Thursdays are always different. And if there's a special program coming up, then that'll be notified. Yeah, that's great, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. And you are the hostess of the day. <laughs> you are Maha host. <laughs> Sometimes we used to say the hostess with the mostess. <laughs> so you can you can lead us in the in the host category. Thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity. And um, I'm, I don't want you to be sad, so. <laughs> <laughs> you could, yes, uh, yeah. We just become uh, very sad uh, hearing that uh, we will not be able to interact with you anymore on Zoom. So uh, we all. I was also, yeah, I was also sad. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Thank Hare Krishna. Glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Dipti, Mikhail. <laughs> yes. Thank you for changing it, Guru Maharaj. We were really, really praying for it to change it and we can have interactive classes. Yeah, yeah. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much for this. Of the week.